Hi, I'm Lisa Reese, a leadership coach and owner of LTR Leadership. In February of this year, David Caruso and I published our first book together entitled A Leader's Guide to Solving Challenges with Emotional Intelligence. As an EI coach, facilitator, and practitioner, I was excited to have the opportunity to partner with David to write a book to help leaders leverage the power of emotions with emotional intelligence blueprints. Since the launch of our book, we noticed something interesting but concerning. In our conversations about our book, we noticed people were using the terms EQ and EI interchangeably. And while that might seem trivial to many people, I think there is an important distinction, and I believe you will as well. First, a brief history of the origins of EI. The term emotional intelligence was used in various contexts, but was formally introduced in a paper in 1990 by John, otherwise known as Jack Mayer, and Peter Salovey, who defined EI as the ability to monitor one's own and others' feelings and emotions, to discriminate among them, and to use this information to guide one's thinking and action. You may have first become familiar with EI when Daniel Goleman wrote a book in 1995 that really got people's attention. It was well done and told a compelling story that became wildly popular. Since that time, there have been hundreds, if not thousands, of articles, books, assessments, workshops, certifications, and more, all centered on what is usually referred to as EQ. This is where the confusion begins. There are two major ways in which EQ and EI differ. First, how they are defined, and second, how they are measured. Let's start with the first difference, how they are defined. EQ, or emotional quotient, includes lots of different skills and traits, including self-awareness, well-being, optimism, and social skills. These are all very interesting and important, but they've been studied, described, and measured before. The other difference is EQ is sometimes viewed as the opposite of IQ. EI, emotional intelligence, on the other hand, refers to a set of hard skills and is a form of intelligence. EI, and we sometimes call this the ability model of EI, refers to a set of skills including the ability to accurately perceive emotions, to leverage emotions to help you connect and think, to understand emotions, and to effectively manage emotions. In this approach, EI is not IQ's opposite. People can be highly emotionally intelligent as well as possessing high levels of analytical intelligence. The second difference is how EQ and EI are measured. It's common to measure EQ using what are called self-report tests. Self-report tests measure what someone thinks of their skills or their traits. It's interesting to know what people think of themselves, but that's very different from measuring their actual skills or abilities. EI, the ability model of EI, typically uses an ability-based approach to measurement. The MESQUITE, which stands for Mayer Salovey Caruso Emotional Intelligence Test, is one such assessment. After Jack and Peter introduced EI as an intelligence, they partnered with David Caruso and created an ability-based test that assesses each of the four areas of emotional intelligence, the ability to perceive emotion, use emotion, understand emotion, and manage emotion. For example, rather than asking how good you are at reading people, in the mesquite you view a person's face and indicate which emotions are present. The test takers' answers are compared to the answers provided by 21 emotions experts. The test taker either knows the correct answer or does not. We like to think of the mesquite as an IQ test for your emotions. Interestingly, many people overestimate their level of EI, and this makes the process of providing feedback and coaching that much more delicate and complex. But why is emotionally, emotional intelligence important? Why should leaders care about it to begin with? As I've mentioned, emotional intelligence is a hard skill. It is an ability that can be measured objectively. Leaders higher on emotional intelligence know that emotions are data, a form of information, and their wise use can help inform decision-making, promotes high levels of team cohesion and collaboration, and has a direct impact on how things get done. 
We wrote our book based on the ability-based model of emotional intelligence. In part one of our short book, we define the four abilities of EI and focus on enhancing EI skills. And in part two, we describe common leadership challenges that apply the four EI skills to solve these challenges using what we call the EI blueprint. So there you have it. Now, when someone asks you the difference between EI and EQ, you can tell them with confidence. To recap, EQ usually measures mixed traits and social skills, is typically measured via self-report, and is sometimes viewed as the opposite of IQ. Emotional intelligence, EI, is a hard skill that measures four areas of emotional intelligence, is considered a form of intelligence, and can be measured using an ability-based objective assessment. If you're interested in learning more or you have any questions about emotional intelligence, I welcome the opportunity to connect with you. You can connect with me on LinkedIn or you can contact me at ltrleadership at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.